Earthquakes impose extreme demands on buildings. Uh, we obviously have a spectrum of different levels of seismic resilience that these buildings can have. Uh, from extremely vulnerable buildings that were constructed prior to 1930, where they didn't consider earthquakes at all, uh, up to the latest levels of seismic design, which aim to have minimal or no damage to buildings. Base isolation is a technique uh, that was developed in New Zealand. Despite the huge innovation, which is now globally renowned, it was uh, somewhat disheartening that the number of buildings in New Zealand that were base isolated was actually quite small. Uh, at the time of the earthquakes, the Christchurch Women's Hospital was the only base isolated structure in the South Island of New Zealand, uh, and it performed uh, relatively well after the earthquake, being able to uh, conduct its critical role as a hospital. Uh, so we've seen an increase in the number of base isolated buildings that have been constructed for uh, structures where the contents are particularly important, like the Christchurch Art Gallery. But we've also seen a large amount of technologies that have been developed here in New Zealand in the last 10 to 15 years being deployed. Technologies such as buckling restrained braces, post-tensioned uh, timber frames and concrete frames, uh, as well as viscous dampers. This is a model of a, uh, what we refer to as a rocking system. Uh, the key components of this are the columns and the beams are like Lego in terms of how they attach together. Uh, and then they're sort of bonded together using uh, these ties, which represent steel tendons that are pre-stressed and post-tensioned. If I initially pull the building off to the side, you see that it deforms by opening gaps between the beams and the columns, and opening that gap increases the tension in this tendon, such that then when I let it go, it returns back to its original position. Uh, and so one of the great benefits of these buildings is that they can undergo deformation without damage, and then they return back to the same vertical position that they were beforehand, uh, which means that from a structural perspective, they don't require any repair. While we tend to focus a lot as structural engineers and earthquake engineers on the structural system itself, actually buildings are comprised of much more than just the bare structure. And so uh, on the order of about 80% of the economic value of the building is actually what we refer to as non-structural elements. So things like glazing, uh, partitions, acoustical ceilings, sprinklers and so on. And what we've observed in moderate earthquakes is that generally the level of shaking is insufficient to cause structural damage, but it does cause a large amount of non-structural damage. Uh, and so really trying to improve the seismic performance of those non-structural elements is critical.